So when, uh, what's the purpose of searching the MLAs? What's the purpose of um, getting online? We have one objective, and that objective is to find a great deal. That simple. Uh, so having said that, one of the first obst obstacles that most investors have is that they don't know where to invest. Um, so here, I have the MLS open right now. It's on the left uh, hand side. Um, so the MLS, it's like the ocean, right? It's got tons of information. It's got all the properties that you can think of that are for sale available to everyone, right? But the question is, even if you have access to the MLS, what areas are you going to be targeting, right? So this is, this is a trick, friends. Um, to be able to master the art of finding awesome deals, you have to focus on great areas, okay? Location, location, location. So we're going to be focusing tonight on uh, B, C areas. So we're going to rate the areas, A being the best, D being the war zone. We're going to focus on the bread and butter, okay? B, C areas. So now the question is, how do you find those areas? Will they be available in the MLS? The answer is no, they're not available in the MLS. Now, uh, how do you know which BC areas? Because if you think about Illinois, we have over 250 areas. So which B and C areas are you going to focus on? Okay, so that's the big question. Very simple, friends. So I'm just going to give you all the shortcuts uh, that we use to just be able to crank it and uh, be able to do um, a deal a month. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need to do is, and I'm going to send this website via the chat, you have to um, be able to draw a radius around where you live. And the rule of thumb, friends, is that you do a 10-mile radius, okay? So I just sent everyone uh, the website. So with this website, uh, you can put your home address wherever you live or wherever you work, and then uh, put in a 10 mile radius and then new circle. You draw a new circle. So for instance, right now I put uh, Norwich, 4740 North Cumberland Avenue. Um, so once I identify the address, which is right here in the middle, I'm gonna maximize this screen so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so once you draw the, the, uh, the radius of a 10 mile, the question is, why are we doing a 10 mile? Why not five? Why not 20? Why not 30? Well, the reason why is because assuming you live in the, in the middle, the minute you start looking at areas over 10 mile radius, it is just not manageable. Whatever is exit strategy you do, whether it's a rental, whether it's a flip or, or a wholesale, it is just too far. It's just not doable for you to be commuting. You're going to be wasting a lot of time. Not only that, but once you start working with a group of contractors, uh, certain contractors won't go beyond a certain area. So that is why our recommendation is for you to keep your search within a 10 mile radius. And believe me, there are hundreds, if not thousands of deals within a two mile radius, let alone a 10 mile radius, okay? Just for, for simplicity purposes, do a 10 mile radius. And then right here, we're gonna be able to identify all the areas around this Plains, Mount Prospect, uh, Franklin Park, Melrose Park, Oak Park, and so forth. So now the question is, I have all these areas that are primarily in, in Cook County. So now, how do I determine if it's a B area, a C area, or an A area, because we're going to stay away from the D areas. That's out of the question. The A areas are too expensive. So you're going to have a tough time uh, making the numbers work. So the way to do that, I'm going to show you very quickly. Uh, we're going to move to uh, Chicago Deal Vault. Okay. Because we are going to find just the BC areas and then we're going to start finding some deals. So the way to do that, once you log on to Chicago Deal Vault, I'm going to click on area reports. We have enhanced this feature of the software uh, to make it so simple for you. So check this out. You can, if you know the area, I'm going to clear here, click on clear, and then you can type in any area that you can think of, okay, that you need to analyze. Because what we're going to do, friends, is not only 
are we going to give you the BC areas, but we're going to give you the key information that you need to know um, on, on any given area, okay? Instead of doing driving for dollars, you have to understand demographics, population growth, crime, schools, uh, what price you should buy the property at, what price you should sell the property, how much are, gonna, are you going to be collecting on rents? How long the property is going to stay in the market if you do a flip? How many flips are happening in the area? What is the absorption rate in the area? Um, so those are key indicators that are going to help you make a good investment, okay? Because that is the first problem or first mistake most investors make. They invest in the wrong areas, okay? So having said that, um, the way most people do it is once you identify all the areas in a Telma radius, then you start looking them up in, in the system. So for instance, uh, Mount Prospect this plane. So all you need to do is type in um, DES this plane. So we're going to be able to see this planes right here. And we're going to go into details. Uh, we're going to pick one area and then find some awesome deals uh, from the MLS. Uh, but before we do that, let me show you the easier way. So if you live in Cook County, what we're going to do is, I'm going to need to make uh, some background noise. Okay. What? Okay, so the way you do it is you just select a county. So for instance, uh, Norwich is in Cook County. Now, what's really critical, friends, is the area type. So here you have the option A, B, C. So we're going to be focusing on B, C. Obviously, if you have the option between a B and a C area, you want to focus on a B area, okay? Bread and butter, because B is going to be a little bit better. Uh, so for instance, Schiller Park is a B area. However, Maywood, it's a C area, uh, okay? So we're going to be focusing on B for now. And then the approach, what approach are you gonna take? What is the exit strategy? Because you need to know this upfront. Okay, what are you gonna be doing? Are you gonna be doing uh, wholesales? Are you gonna be doing flips? Are you gonna be doing buy and holds? to do grown up work, baby. Come on, mommy wants to watch this. Okay. So that's it. So once you know your approach, you can do wholesale, flips, cash flow. Uh, fix some cash flow. Okay, for now, I'm gonna select both flips and cash flow. Okay, so all you need to do is hit search. And then one of the things that you have the option is to put a price. Okay, but we're not gonna worry about the price for now. So we're gonna put B area, select the approach, flip. We're gonna be focusing today on cash flow, for instance. Could be. Okay, boom. So we, we get a lot of areas. Uh, we have nine pages. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna limit this by the sweet spot to buy a detached. DE stands for detached, so single family homes. Um, so friends, based on our um, purchase record track, the sweet spot to buy a, a home should be below 150,000. Okay, so I'm gonna further narrow the areas uh for cash flow on their uh, $150,000 for the purchase price however this is very important i'm going to put three more zeros and then click on search okay so we get few areas so old zip lions park forest richton park south holland round lake beach so for instance all zip is a hot area right now so let's just quickly take a look at all zip uh, because you've got to understand the area um like the back of your hand okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to open up the report right here boom and i'm going to maximize it okay so what is all zip all about it's in cook county uh so the first thing that we're going to show you is the geographic location but we're going to just really quick get a great idea of what all CP is all about so we show you some factors that we observe that are going to affect your uh, property value but overall uh, focus on the livability score 73 any area that has a livability of score of over 70 it's a great area 
it's for sure a B area. So we're gonna be focusing on livability score over 70%. So this is the summary in a nutshell. You know, amenities, cost of living, crime. So everything is great except for employment. So that means there are not too many sources of employment. So now what I care about, uh, so the crime, the red line is the average. Uh, it's a little bit um, in some areas higher. This is the heat map for the crime and then schools. Black markers denote great schools. Um, household <coughs> income, this is important. The median in Illinois is 57. Uh, so all CP is about the median, 53. Now, something that is really important for us is population growth. We want to understand if people are moving into the area or migrating. In this case, it's negative 1.2. So I would say it's almost very stable, right? N not much movement into it. Uh, right here, the industry, this tells you about the employment, uh, which we have an F for it. Now, here in housing, housing occupancy, what we focus on is uh, owner's occupancy, in this case, is 59%. Renters is 34%, and then vacancy is 6%. So you want to get into, if you're going to do buy and hold or a cash flow approach, you want to have a vacancy of less than 10%. Uh, the higher the owner occupancy, the better the spread of ownership. Um, so the summer is right here. So this is a B area. We recommend a cash flow approach. Uh, and everything that we saw all, all up above, it's right here. Okay. So now uh, this is the most important table. Sales market analysis in the, 12, in the last 12 months. So this is going to tell you how much you should pay for a property. Um, so whether it's a multi-unit, it's a uh, attached mean, means a condo or a townhome, a detached single family home. So we're going to be, be focusing on single family homes. Um, <clears throat> so right here, what I want to show you first is the thing that you need to look at first is the sweet spot to buy a single family home is 150000 okay? And then you should sell this for over 150000 now look at this, if you decide to do a flip, the average sold market time is 91 days. So if you're gonna do a flip, expect the property to sit in the market for at least three months. Now something that is really cool that we show you is the number of flips that are happening in this area. So not too many, 10 for single family homes, 18, it's a little bit higher for condos. So these are critical stats for you to understand one step that is really critical is the absorption rate. What this measures is how quickly properties are selling in the, pro in the area. Okay, so these are the number of properties sold in the last 12 months. So what this tells you is that on a monthly basis, um, there are 15 or let's say 16 properties being sold in Altsip. Okay, so obviously the higher this number, the better, okay? Because that means there's a lot of movement of houses. Um, <clears throat> so this is an important indicator for you to understand. And then this is the months of housing supply. So let's assume that uh, there are a hundred, there, there are, in this case, there are 189 listings, meaning properties for sale. So assuming that they are selling about, um, they're selling about 15 properties a month or 16 properties a month. How long will this inventory last? Assuming there are no new listings coming into the market. So the inventory is gonna last for only two months, okay? Two and a half months, which means that it's a great market, right? So properties are moving very quickly. So if you were, um, if we were not to, to, to put any new properties for sale in all ship, all the inventory would be finished, would be sold out in two and a half months, which is great. So pay close attention to what I just said. The lower the months of housing supply, the better. And the higher the absorption rate, the better. Okay. So having said that, we have a good understanding of all ship. Now let's find out about um, rental market. So pretty much we do the same thing. Uh, we want to know what the rental market is like for a two bedroom, for a three bedroom. So we're going to give you the rents. So for a two bedroom, it's about uh, 900, the medium for a three bedroom. Look at these rents are very high, 1800. Okay. Friends, I want to repeat this again. Three bedroom in all ship is 1800, which is very high. So think of this. 
if you buy a property for 150,000, right? The rule of thumb is that you have to collect in rent at least 1% of the purchase price. So that'll be 1,500. So if you pay 15, 15, uh, 150,000 and you can rent this for 1,800, it's just a great deal, okay? So those are some rule of thumbs that are gonna help you analyze deals. Okay, so now the rents are very, very high. You see what I mean? So we're gonna find some awesome deals in all SIP. Now, I wanna show you the MLS, right? Um, it's been such a long time, friends, that I've used the MLS. I no longer use the MLS. Why? Because it's like jumping into the ocean. And I'm gonna show you why. Okay, so now we know all SIP, all SIP like the back of our hand, okay? You have to buy a single family home under 150,000. You do a flip, it's gonna stay in the market for uh, three months. Rents are very high, right? Everything is amazing in all SIP except for employment. Keep that in mind. Population growth is stable. Uh, so let's find some awesome deals. So uh, I'm gonna search. Uh, detach, D-E, that stands for single, single family homes. Mm, okay, connect. Okay, so let's connect again. My session timeout. Okay, let's connect. So I'm gonna show you what brokers do. And uh, so we have a brokerage, um, but we just use it for the access to the MLAs, okay? Uh, so let me show you what brokers do. And this is one of the reasons why brokers, right? Ordinary brokers and real estate investors don't get along. I'm gonna show you why. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do is find the area. So right here, I'm gonna put in all zip. Okay, all zip, and then I need to limit this by the search price. Okay, we we should buy something for less than 150. So I'm gonna put 160. Okay, and then I uh, that's it. So now, what statuses am I interested? I'm interested in. I don't care about contingent because obviously they're on the contract temp. That means they're not available. The rest, uh, it's okay. So I'm going to find the properties. Okay, find me the properties. So we just found seven properties. That's it. Okay, so now this range on from 79,000 all the way to 159,000, right? So now the question is, this is the problem that I have. I'm just gonna randomly pick one that is for 125. Okay, this property. Okay, so okay. this property. I see a lot of Okay, much better. Uh, so this property is sold for 125,000. Let's just quickly look at the images. So the property looks dated, right? It needs some work, but it looks overall nice, right? So the question is, uh, okay, fine. This is 125 for sale. It's been on the market for 35 days. Now, the next thing that I do is I read the description, right? So it says that it's gorgeous, nice block, everything is cool about this. Then I go down and then look at the agent's remarks, right? This is what brokers can see. If you are not a broker, uh, you won't be able to see these. So if you get alerts from your broker, you're not going to be able to see these. So offers must be submitted via uh, res.net. Um, okay, let me see if anything stands out from the agent's remarks. So you need to send a pre-approval letter. Um, okay, that's pretty much it. If you're gonna buy it under your entity, send all the docs for the entity. So all the package must be complete, completed. Um, that's pretty much it, okay? It's that simple. But now my question is, I, I, we used to get a stock right here. So it's 125,000. How much is this property worth after, after we do the repairs, right? So we got a stock right there. So let me tell you what brokers need to do for us. Uh, they need to do a, what they call a CMA. So manage, add a new CMA report, okay? 
comparative market analysis. So right here, I'm going to create a new report. I choose any random uh, person and then click on next. So what I'm going to do next is I want to be able to find out once we do the repairs on the property, how much can we sell this property for? So the way to do it is find, finding comps. So find comparables. So again, detached, and then I need to put the area. So it's going to be all zip right here. And then remember uh, the search price. Um, no, I'm going to leave it open in here. Uh, something that I do need to uh, specify is the number of bathrooms, right? This property was, I believe, a three bedroom, so minimum and maximum three bedroom. Um, that's all I need. The minimum should be at least 100,000. And then view results. Boom, we see a lot of properties that are pending, that closed. So then what I need to do is select them all, right? And then add them add these to my CMA. So I have a bunch of properties, right? Right here. And then what the MLS is going to do is going to say, okay, the minimum is a hundred. The maximum, the maximum price property that is contingent or that closed is 178. So the average is 141,000. Okay. 141,000. That's the listing price, but it actually sold for 136,000. Right, so a property in Olsip that is a three bedroom, one bath, will sell for about 136,000, right? So, but now I would need to go into each of these properties just to make sure that it's been rehab, right? So it is very time consuming. So now let's go back to the subject property uh, and then uh, we wanna make an offer, okay? So, Okay, let's go back to, I don't want to see the, okay, back out to the property. Okay, so this property is a three bedroom right here, number of bedrooms, three bedrooms, one bath. So now let's assume you want to make an offer. So the way to make an offer on this property is you go on there more information and then uh, scroll down. and then write a contract. So this is super time consuming, okay? To be able to do this, I mean, it, it is just, I just couldn't do it. So you put in all your information about the buyer, um, your, who your broker is, you put in your attorney, all of this is, you have to fill in. And then uh, once that's all filled in, then you have to click on continue. And then what are we doing? We're gonna make an offer 7.0 contract. Okay. So then I add form and then boom, it gives me the 7.0 contract. But it's already pre-filled with the property address, but guess what? Um, I still need to put in the seller information, I mean, the buyer information, I need to put how much I'm gonna buy for. Once I finish all of these, guess what? It still doesn't have my initials, my signatures. So then I need to feed this into DocuSign, okay? So you can imagine, you can imagine why it is just so time consuming. You can imagine why it is just not feasible uh, to use the MLS to make an offer quickly, right? To find the ARV. So what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same using Chicago Deal Vault. Okay. So now, uh, because we're a brokerage, we give you access to the MLS um, via Chicago Deal Vault. So you're going to be able to search the MLS like if you were a broker. Okay. So look how simple this is. I just couldn't do the MLS. So I no longer use the MLS. So here I'm going to put in all zip. I know the sweet spot to buy a single family home. That's gonna be 100, I think we put in 160. And we care about only active listings right here. Okay, so give me all the active listings for the property type, single family homes. Okay, we can do townhomes and two to four flats. Just give me the deals. Okay, so this is gonna show you 
the properties listed by price. Okay, we're pretty much seeing the same results. Look at this, the same property trip right here. Okay, so the difference is that now when we look at this property on deal vault, it's gonna be it's gonna be slightly different. Here, um, what's really important, friends, is that to be able to do a CMA in deal vault, all you need to do is instead of you know the way the brokers typically do it. We're just gonna click on search right here. That's all we need to do. All, everything is pre-defaulted. So we're going to the MLS. Everything that I show you on the MLS, we are automating. Uh, so we're going ahead and searching the properties that sold in the last six months within a one mile radius that are three bed, one and a half ads. Boom, we got a bunch of them. You see how quickly, not only that, we plot them all on the map right here. You see how simple that is? Um, but one of them, um, we can do this for pretty much any property, okay? It will just take us seconds. What's really cool, friends, is that um, in Chicago Deal World, we're going to do the ARV ahead of time for you. Look at this. So when you look at this property, this property is for sale for 130, but the after repair value could be 194. So view details. Okay, so in this case, we can do exactly the same thing. So this is a four bedroom, one bath. So it's slightly bigger. Now we can see the pictures and see the condition of the property. If it needs, yeah, it's, it needs some work. It's dated for sure. Okay, so it needs some work. Uh, but again, with a click of a button, friends, all I need to do is click there. Um, we're going to get the CMA and then you can click on the details tab and this is exactly everything that you need to know. You know, these are the description of the property right there. The agent remarks right here and this is how you can get in touch with the broker. What's really powerful, friends, about these is that you can make an offer right on the spot. So all you need to do is once you did the CMA, so if the property is for sale for 130, let's assume we're going to make an offer for uh, 90,000, right? Because we know this property needs work. And not only that, we're going to tell you right from right here, how much you should offer for the property depending on your strategy. So this piece of information, friends, is critical. Because once you find the property, now you know the ARV, Okay, so a four bedroom could be sold potentially for maybe 170,000. How much should you offer for the property? Well, that is determined on the strategy, the exit strategy that you're gonna take on this property. If you're gonna flip the property, you shouldn't pay more than 108. If you are gonna rent the property, the most you can pay for the, this property is 128. So we're gonna make an offer, let's say for 90,000 on this property. So the way to do that is just click on make offer. And then uh, we're gonna put in 90,000, one, two, three. We're gonna close on um, November 1st or November 4th. And then the earnest money, it's gonna be about 1%. That's all you need to do. So we're gonna default um, the, uh, the brokerage, who the lender is. In this case, we're gonna use Chicago funding. And then for the attorney, Gary Davidson. For the brokerage, we're using our, our brokerage, but our preferred broker is uh, Frank Montreux. Okay, so all you need to do is submit offer. What's really powerful, friends, is with a click of a button, boom. That's it. Here, with a click of a button, you got the contract and it's got the initial. So you no longer need to put it through DocuSign, nothing. Everything is initial. Even the last page will have your signature, okay? On line uh, 520, it's got your signature. Uh, everything, the listing agent, your broker, your uh, attorney, everything. And not only that, friends, but what's really powerful is that in Chicago Deal Vault, uh, we allow you on their user settings. Let me show you this. If I click on user settings, you can upload three documents the proof of funds, articles of incorporations, and operating agreement. These are the three documents that the lender will require from you. Okay, 
So now let me show you something that's really cool. That contract that we just generated is going to be in your broker's inbox or your inbox, whichever email that you put in right here. Boom. Okay. So right here, I'm going to show. I'm gonna just download everything, but uh, save all to OneDrive, download all, okay? So I'm downloading everything that we generated. So in here, let me show you. I believe there is a comment on the chat. What if you need disclosures? Okay, so that's a great question. Uh, Minal, so they're asking if you need disclosures. So let me show you, when you make an offer for an MLS deal, let me go back to the property. We always default the disclosures to know that we have not yet received the disclosures. Right here, has not received disclosures. So that is the, um, that is the default because we're gonna need to get these disclosures from the listing broker. Many times they forget even to put them on the MLS. They have the option to upload them to the MLS. So by default, since we don't want any um, miscommunication, we're gonna say that we did not receive the disclosure. So the minute they get our offer, then we're gonna need to request the disclosures right away. So great question. Uh, thank you, Minal. So right here, we are gonna, in the zip file that we're uh, put it into the email. We have the art articles of incorporation. This is our proof of funds or line of credit. This is uh, the offer itself and the operating agreement. Everything is in, in one email, right? So pretty much look what the email says uh, on Outlook, okay? So it says, please be so kind to submit attached offer. Thank you. So this will go directly to your uh, broker, okay? So all your broker needs to do is pretty much submit the offer. That's simple, friend. So that is why, since we have automated the process of making offers on MLS deals, we can just crank up uh, two, three, five offers a day, okay? Uh, and then once the, the broker, in this case, if you don't have a broker, um, you can go to Prefer Partners, and then look up um, real estate broker right here. Real estate broker, we're gonna give you Frank. Make sure you call him and then feel free to put his contact information under the broker. So if I go to the uh, user settings and then I select user settings and uh, not user images. Well, user images are important, friends. You've got to put your initials and your signatures because when we generate the 7.0 contract, it's going to have your initials and signatures. So you don't need to do DocuSign or none of that. So on the user settings, this is where you're going to put your broker. Uh, if you're working with a broker or if you want to work with Frank, this is where you put your broker's information and he's going to get the offer so that he can represent, to, represent you on the transaction. Um, so it is that simple, friends. It is just the way that you can make many offers on, uh, on, any, given, uh, on any given day. So you can just scroll down the list. And this is what I really like about this, that not only are we giving you the list price, but we give you the ARV. This is huge, friends, because if we go back to the MLS, okay, this property is for sale for 149, right? But this doesn't tell me much, right? It's, it's for sale for 149, but now we're talking, right? So the ARV on this property could be 164, so it tells me how much I need to get it on the contract, okay? And then obviously we show you the pictures. Look, this property is pretty nice. It's like pretty much moving ready. It doesn't need much work at all, right? So this is a great property as a matter of fact. Um, they're asking for 149. Um, so it is worth making a, a lower offer to fit our numbers. So, and again, to do the CMA, this is critical, friends. All you need to do is just click on search because we're gonna take the default settings that appraisers use. So they, they, what they use is 
They look for comps in the last six months within a one mile radius. Not only that, they use a plus minus 20% um, of the square footage. So in this case, the square footage on this property is 1100. Okay, so we're gonna go plus minus 20% on that. That's exactly what appraisers use. Okay, so boom, we get, we get the comps right here. And what's really powerful is that we're gonna update the ARV based on the comps. So we can safely say that this property is worth 162,000 and then we're going to update the numbers accordingly. So let me tell you something that Hugo, no one can hear you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you for checking with me. I'm just going to repeat what I just said. So once we are looking at the property right here, I just run the comps. So what I just told you, I hope you heard me. Um, we're using the settings used by appraisers. So the appraisers want to see comparables that sold in the last six months uh, within a one mile radius with a plus minus 20% uh, size on the square footage. So the, the, the subject property is 1100. So we do the plus minus. All you need to do is click search. So in seconds, we do a CMA. While a real estate broker is going to take maybe 10, 15 minutes. Do, do you see the, the, the power of this? Okay, so we're gonna pretty much blow them out of the water time-wise. And then, so once we know the ARV, 162,000, this property, just by looking at the pictures, look, it's, it's pretty nice. The floors are done, it's painted, it's ready to be rented. I really, in fact, I really like this property. So we don't need to put, and then it's got a two-car garage, it's been on the market for six days. Friends, this is a great property. I'm, I'm serious. We're gonna need to. Uh, we're gonna need to make an offer on this property. I mean, like we're live. Um, so what I might need to 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 go ahead and do is um, call the agent. But I'm gonna make an offer live. So how much are we gonna offer? So this property, um, the assumption is that it needs rehab, but it doesn't need that much rehab. So we're computing the rehab right here based on the square footage, the number of bedrooms, and the location. Uh, and this is with the assumption that it's a B area, a light to medium rehab, but it doesn't need much. At the most, maybe 5,000. So what I'm going to uh, be able to do is, I'm going to need to add in, uh, uh, this rehab amount into the offer price. So let's say for a rental is 106, we're going to be adding uh, 20,000. So we can offer 125,000 easily on this property. If we can get this property for 125,000, it's going to be a great deal. Because let me show you. If I click on the rental calculator, we're going to tell you what the rent is going to be. So the rent is going to be about 1,600. So the rule of thumb is you need to collect 1% of the purchase price. If we get this property in the contract for 125 and we can rent it for 1,600, it's a home run deal, friends. So having said that, uh, I'm going to make a live offer on this. Uh, so we're going to make an offer for 120, one, two, three, and everything should be set. So meet offer. Boom. So obviously I'm going to get another email with the updated offer. This is it. Okay. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to be calling the, I'm going to be calling the listing broker. So Patrick, uh, so friends, hold the line because I'm gonna I'm gonna call him right now. So let me go grab my cell phone.
Okay, friends. Uh, so I'm back and I got my cell phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, call him right now. So 708, I'm going to put him on the speakerphone. So it's going to be 708-712-7786. Hey, Patrick, how are you? Uh, this is Bo from Host Realty. I'm calling regarding your listing at 3648 West Scott in Allsip. Yes, sir. Um, so um, what is it that your client is looking for? Um, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious to see where we can meet to make this work. Well, I, they got what they were looking for. We just accepted a contract about two hours ago. You're kidding me. You just took an offer right now? About two hours ago. Two yes. hours ago. But, I mean, has it been verbally accepted or ha have they signed it's the contract? Been signed. You've got to be kidding me, Patrick. <laughs> that was a good haul. Have you seen it? You show it yet or no? I, I just, uh, you know, I just saw, I, I just literally, I just found it like 10 minutes ago. This property, it looks really good. It doesn't need much work. So I'm ready to make an offer on this deal. Um, don't tell me they just signed a contract. Um, did they get um, near asking price? They got very good, yes. Near asking price. Sugar I mean, muffin. Well, like you said, look, I mean, you're not going to, I mean, for under 150000 find a, a home that doesn't need a lot. It's got a new furnace in the air, a yeah. new roof. It's, it's a good home. Yeah, it wasn't no, a big totally. home. That's why the price was like it was. Yeah, 149 Just by looking at the price, you know, I did my CMA. Uh, I yeah. came up with 162000 for this property. So, well, there you go. We'll, we'll take 160 <laughs> You'll take 150 No, 160 Oh, 160 <laughs> so tell me, uh, if we if we were to, um, you need a above asking price to make this happen. Is that right? Well, I I don't want to say too much, but yes, uh, you. Uh, I mean, they're happy. They're happy if we can uh, make it happen for asking a little bit over asking price. Okay, so let me think about it very quickly, and then I'm gonna call you back and, and get back to you. Very good. On these. Okay, Patrick, thank you okay. very much. Um, and then I'll get back to you tonight. All right, thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, I don't know if you heard my conversation with the Patrick. Did you guys hear me? Did you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, awesome. So <laughs> they said um, they just took an offer, right? Like two hours ago. So this is a great deal, friends. I mean, I, we can do uh, run the numbers. Um, I mean, I can tell you the most we can offer on this property. So um, we are personally focusing on uh, rental properties. Uh, we, we're trying to stay away from flips and wholesaling for now, but this is a great rental property. So friends, let's do a quick analysis for the rental to see... Uh, if we can offer, let's say 150,000. So the rent we're gonna be collecting is this much, utilities. Friends, utilities are gonna be by the, paid by the tenant. Maintenance, we're gonna allocate like 75. And then management fees, uh, we pay $50 per unit. Insurance about, I'm gonna make it about 75. Taxes, 396, um, then property cost. So there, if we offer them 150,000, one, two, three, we're gonna get this property. And listen, friends, I, one of the things that I hope you noticed, the agent disclosed confidential information about his client. They're not supposed to say how much their client is willing to offer, but pretty much he said, Hugo, just make it asking or a little bit over asking, and we're gonna knock off the offer we have, and then we're, we're gonna give you the, the property. I mean, <laughs> I, I just love to test um, broker's ethics, and for the most part, it's always in our favor. So, and then rehab, I mean, this property needs, I mean, you heard that, it's got new roof, new mechanicals, the kitchen, everything is, like you don't need, like to, you do don't need to do anything. So. The most we're gonna put is maybe uh, for rehab, maybe 3,000 just for ex unexpected. Closing cost, 2%. I'm just gonna click on calculate. 
So if we pay 150,000 for this property, look how much we're gonna be cash flowing, friends. We're gonna be cash flowing 350. 350 on this property and then the debt coverage ratio is 155 so the debt coverage ratio needs to be over 125 so this property is going to get funded like not tomorrow we're going to be cash flowing uh 350 dollars we usually like to target uh 400 and up but still this property doesn't need anything i mean it's ready to get rented and as you can see all zip is a b area it's safe schools are great rents are very strong um so friends um i'm gonna open up the line in just a second to get your opinion uh now let's just quickly do the flip okay because for the flip uh i don't think it's gonna work for a flip you do need to do better um to get 162 the the kitchen uh looks good for a rental but not for a flip let me show you the kitchen you see the kitchen is you know, for a flip, you would need the stainless steel, right? Uh, maybe you need to paint the cabinets. So for the flip, I mean, if we wanted to do a flip, we might need to put in up to 10,000. One, two, three, potentially, just to make it even with the staging, right? For a staging, we would pay about 2,000. Holding time, remember, it's 90 days. So we're gonna hold the property maybe for four months. Sales cost, it's a percentage of the, um, Selling price commission, we're gonna do 4%. Then utilities, we're gonna pay the utilities while we hold the property. So utilities are gonna be probably 150. Uh, water, gas, electric, insurance, we said it's gonna be about 60, 75. Taxes, we don't touch. Property cost, 150,000. One, two, three. And that's it. So let's see uh, what the numbers say for a flip. So it says, no, net profit, it's negative, right? Everything is negative. Why? Because there's not much room on it to do a flip. But for a rental, friends, this will work all day long. And look, it's been on the market for six days. So friends, what I want to show you is, what I wanted to show you tonight is that indeed, you can still find awesome deals in the MLS using Chicago Deal Vault. Had I used the MLS, friends, I would have not been able to call Patrick, make an offer like in seconds. I wouldn't have been able to do a quick uh, um, CMA. So pretty much the MLS was slowing us down big time. So friends, I no longer use the MLS. Listen clearly to what I'm saying. I no longer use the MLS. What we did is we dissected every single feature of the MLS and we put it into Chicago Deal World. Okay, so we no longer need the MLS because we just have whatever piece of information that we need, we have it in front of, our, of, of us. We can look at it in just seconds. Um, so friends, Allsip is a great, great area. However, Allsip is far away from us. Uh, so we live very close from Norwich. We live in Schiller Park. So if I show you again the radius, Allsip is not in our uh, 10 mile radius. Also it might be in a probably 20 mile radius or 25 mile radius. Um, but friends, uh, if you are on the line and you are interested in this property, we can get it on the contract for you, okay? We can get this property on the contract for you today if you're interested. Um, for us, it's a little bit too far but the numbers are gonna work only for a rental, which is okay, friends, okay? Um, because uh, that's what I'm gonna talk about on Sunday. We're gonna run one of the biggest events on Sunday. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna reverse engineer how we were able to do 27 deals in, in about two and a half years, okay? So we're gonna start with the empty in mind and work your uh, our way backwards. So on Sunday, it's gonna be super powerful, friends. But again, if you're interested in Allsip, which is a great, great area, upcoming, uh, very strong rents, if you like this property, you have nothing to do on the property and it's going to, it's going to cash flow $350 or so on this property. So the cool thing is a very little rehab. So right now, friends, uh, 
and I'm going to show this on Sunday, we're focusing on off-market properties with a lot bigger spreads. So the properties we're focusing on, uh, we are able to do a successful flip and a successful rental. So we have uh, the two exit strategies that we can take successfully. On this property, you can only do a rental. That's it. You can buy it, turn around and rent it. Um, and then uh, you're going to have, when you buy the property for $150,000, you're going to buy, you're going to start with about uh, 10000 on equity. So it's not an amazing deal, but it's not bad. Okay. So I just wanted to show you, friends, how powerful um, this tool can be when it comes to understanding the area, make, finding the deals analyzing the deals in seconds, making an offer, getting in touch with the broker. So all I would need to do, let me show you. Uh, if I go to the details, I go to Patrick's information. I just copy, I would copy his email and then um, I would just do a forward of this email, which contains the offer, uh, all the entity docs, all the line of credits, everything. So it's just with a forward and that's it. We get it on the contract like in the next hour or so. So if, uh, let me see if there are any uh, questions on the line. Uh, so all the numbers are pretty accurate on the deal vault. So that's the question, yes. The numbers on deal vault are very, very accurate. Uh, super excited for Sunday. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, somebody is saying 350 a month, 4,200 a year. Uh, so somebody said, not me. Okay, so somebody's asking, would you be purchasing with a loan from Chicago funding, then refinancing? Okay, great questions, friends. So somebody's saying, uh, somebody's not interested. Somebody's interested about the event. Yes, at the end of the presentation tonight, I'm gonna to show you Sunday's event, what we're gonna talk about and where it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be at one o'clock in Double Tree Oakbrook, but I'm gonna show you the invite at the end of this presentation. So yeah, totally, the numbers are very accurate in Chicago Deal Vault. I'm gonna tell you why, because we have live stream access to the MLS. It's not a fee like IDX, like most brokers uh, who have a website, they have a feed, so they get a, a nightly feed. No, we have live stream access to the MLS. So if right now somebody makes, a, makes an update on the MLS, Chicago Deal will reflect that. So it is very, very accurate, as accurate as it can get. Um, so another question is, so are we gonna be using Chicago funding for this deal? Um, we could, we can use a Harmony lender for this deal. And then uh, the problem with this, let me tell you, uh, when you buy this property, we usually buy distressed properties. So we get a Harmony lender, we make some repairs, we add value to the property, and then we refinance. But in this case, there's very little value that we can add because it's got everything. The rehab has been done for you. So there's no back in value. The only equity on this deal is 160,000. So the problem on this deal, on the financing is that you're gonna have stock, uh, I'm thinking about um, about 15 to 20,000 on this deal. So that's about 10 to 15% stock in this property that you will not be able to, uh, to get back because you're gonna, usually what I'm gonna show on Sunday is you purchase a property using Harmony Lender, you do the rehab, right? So you add value to the property, then you rent the property, and then you refinance to take all your money out. But in this deal, you're gonna put 10% to 15% down with the Harmony Lender, let's say Chicago funding, but you won't be able to take that out. I mean, you can refinance uh, for sure, but the problem is that there's no back in value. There's only, you pay 150 and this property is worth 162. Um, obviously you didn't do any of the work, so you'll be able to refinance, but you cannot get all your money out. That's the problem on this deal. So you will have 15, about 15,000 stuck into this deal. So our belief, and what I'm gonna show you on Sunday is that we like to have zero money stuck into the property. So I'm gonna show you how you're gonna be able to do that. So that is why we, number one, this property is too far. 
so we wouldn't take it. Number two, we like properties that we can have a flip and a rental exit strategy successfully. This does not, this property does not meet that criteria. So we would skip this, even though it's not a bad deal, but it's not the best deal. I know we can find much better deals in Chicago Deal World, which I'm gonna show you on Sunday. I'm gonna show you home run deals, okay? This is sort of a good deal for rental, but we're looking for home run deals, okay? Where when you buy the property, you start with at least 50 to 75,000 in equity, okay? And that you don't need much work. So I'm super excited about Sunday, friends. Um, so another question is, how much is the monthly membership of Deal Vault? So <laughs> people wanna sign up already. Um, so I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. How do you arrive at the after repair value? So the way we do the ARV, friends, uh, just click on the comps tab and click on search. So we are using the criteria that appraisers use. Find me all the comps that sold in the last six months within a one mile radius that are exactly the same as the subject. Boom, we give you the comps uh, that we pull from the MLS. We get the average and then we show you what the ARV is, 162,000 for this property. So this is as accurate as it can get and we do it in seconds. So friends, you are going to blow any broker out of the water with Chicago Deal when it comes to the MLS piece of it. When making offers, when doing the uh, ARV, that is why, friends, I no longer log on to the MLS. Let me tell you something. Like about two days ago, I wanted to log on to the MLS. Believe it or not, my account was deactivated. I was like, what the? So, yes, because I don't use it and it's somehow they don't have the auto pay. So my payment was due like three weeks ago. Just to put it in that perspective, friends, we no longer use the MLS because of the reasons that I showed you just now tonight. Anyway, friends, so I, I hope you got the point, right? Not only did we, let's just quickly summarize what we did. We found uh, B areas that are worth investing in Number one. Number two, we found a good deal that we could get on the contract tonight using Chicago Deal Vault um, instead of using the MLS. 